hello everybody good morning welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is aubrey and today i'm going to be sharing my testimony um if you don't know what a testimony kind of it's just a recount of your relationship um with christ or your relationship with religion i don't know why i just got the sudden urge to go ahead and film this i was going to maybe do it in the new year and then i was like oh maybe i can do it like on christmas day because you know like tis a reason for the season jesus was born on christmas not really but like we celebrate christmas day as his birthday and um advent season and things like that but for some reason i just got the urge to do it and i think that's because i've been having some really big revelations in my life more specifically in the past week and we'll get to that when it gets to that part in my testimony but i just thought that maybe because i feel called to do it it could help someone um someone could you know be brought to christ because of this so i'm just going to kind of try to recount my testimony i will say testimonies change every single time you say it every single day it changes because your relationship with christ and religion is always changing every single second actually um but yeah i'm just going to go to my notes i try to um write my testimony um i have like a notes thing right here so i'll probably be looking at this to make sure i don't forget anything but yeah this video is just going to kind of be a little um it's just going to be like a little chatty video so you can grab something and listen to it if you want i've been really enjoying having a fireplace on my tv so i did that today as well but anyways yeah let's just hop into it before we get started i do want to talk about i briefly mention um disordered eating and then i heavily talk about sexual assault so just be aware before you watch this video take care of yourself um i will try to leave timestamps down below in case you want to watch one section over the other but yeah okay let's hop into the video my relationship with religion began in the catholic church when my mom married my dad my dad was a part of the catholic church and so we just started going to the catholic church um that's my earliest like remembrance of having a relationship um yeah i went with my family went every sunday we never missed mass um we also did like the um you would go on like christmas eve things like that i think part of that is since my mom was wearing my dad she wanted to just like fit in and so she took us kids because you know if your husband and all of his family is going to do it you're also going to do it um so yeah that's a religion that i would say i was first brought up in is catholic church and i'm just going to kind of read because i don't want to forget anything that while i was there i didn't really have a relationship with christ it was a very interesting thing because we heard about Jesus, we knew about Jesus, but it was mostly about how like God is this all power, almighty man and mighty power and he is just out to get you. That's kind of like how my relationship with Christ was, is everything bad that you did, um, like you were going to hell, there was no hope for you and it, it just was like very scary to me which there is a sense of scariness when it comes to um like your judgment day like there is scariness to that but the way that it was it was making like i didn't want to go to church because i was terrified that i would go to a confessional and i would be told that i'm going to hell and things like this where it created like a very traumatic experience with my relationship with christ um i will say another thing is i didn't feel like i had any relationship like i said it felt like a really like weird power dynamic where i was just scared all the time and i was scared of this man i didn't want to be friends with him that was kind of my relationship viewpoint and also there's another thing where i don't think we really dived into who jesus was it was more here are the saints here are their good works you need to be picking a saint for your confirmation um this is what a good catholic person looks like is one that does all these good works like i felt like the main idea was about saints and so we actually left um right before my eighth grade confirmation and this again was something that was very hard for me was to transfer or um transfer over from like a catholic church over to a christian non-denominational church i was afraid that my family was going to hell i was very resistant to it because we had been told like if you leave the catholic church like there's no hope for you you're gonna you're gonna suffer and so i mean you could even ask my mom where i refused like i was like i'm not going to church my parents forced me which i am glad <laughs> to a certain extent i'm glad my parents forced me because it's gotten to me where i am right now but again, like I said, I was very resistant towards it um, because 
I just, I was so scared. Um, but my parents, again, they kept on making me go, was going every Sunday. And eventually, I don't, I don't know if there was a certain like point where my mind shift clicked, but it, it became more enjoyable. And I think there was factors of like, oh, this community is a little bit more fun because you're like raising your hands. These songs are not hymns. They're praise and worship songs that are like super exciting. And like, they sound like pop songs. We were listening to Lecrae at youth group, things like that, that made me very interested in Christianity. And yeah, that's kind of how it happened. And I started volunteering in the kids ministry, really getting involved in the church. Yeah, that was like kind of the transitionary piece. And then I would say I was saved when I was 15. I was at a camp meeting at that same church and there was just a time when I was lifting up my hands. And I think it was at a point where I, it was at the end of my freshman year of high school, relationships had started, things like that. And I was also having some issues with my mom just not I my mom was having some big health problems she's always had health problems but specifically at this time there was some health concerns going on and I just knew that the only person I could rely on at this time was God and that I wanted to stop living a life where I felt judgmental I had at that point been struggling with some eating issues I really started relying on my outwardly appearance um like I started restricting my eating and then that would lead to binging and purging and things like that and so I wanted to stop feeling like I had to be the certain ideal on the outside live up to these expectations and then all the stressors that were going on and I just lifted up my hands and I asked God to come into my life and it didn't feel like anything insane happened it I mean maybe it felt like a weight was lifted off because I could be like okay like God's got me God is in my life I have nothing to worry about and that was kind of how it was for a couple months i entered into a relationship again with the same person that had been kind of kind of on and off for a year and within that relationship it was very abusive and i like i said i did accept christ but i definitely was not living for him because the person i was with was having their issues and i think their issues were impacting me as well as like what was going on in the relationship it was emotionally abusive mentally abusive and physically abusive um, I was sexually assaulted in that relationship and when that happened it was I mean obviously it was like life altering and life shattering but I think at the time I was just very like I was very angry I think not not even angry with the person I was angry at myself for like letting it happen to me and I was also angry with God honestly I felt like um, I was very confused I think about how hey god i decided to give you my life like six months ago and now this is happening why and it was a lot of confusion and the end of that relationship it continued to happen <laughs> it was a cycle of abuse thankfully um i was able to get out of that relationship and i entered into a new relationship a, a few months later um with someone who actually had god at the front of their life like they you could tell that this person lived for God and I admired that so much and I wanted that and thankfully like this person they were the first person I told about my sexual assault and they were a great person to get me through it and eventually like I could tell my mom and things like that and start actually healing from it um but yeah we for the first two years of our relationship I would say God was at the forefront it was our focus to make sure we were respecting each other um in a godly relationship and I think that is definitely what I needed at the time throughout those two years the last two years of high school I would say I was really growing my faith um, depending on him depending on God and just you know trying to figure out life um, asking him for help for help a lot of help I would say um, yeah I, I did start or I did stop kind of going to church because of COVID and things like that my senior year but um, which I kind of think leads into how my transition into college came. Because at that time, like, I had this person in my life that was religious and, like, you could just see how God worked in his life and I wanted that to happen for me. And I'm not saying that my relationship with religion and God was because of him, him but I do definitely believe that there was a sort of influence there is because I wanted to live up to this expectation of oh my gosh, I can see how this person is having God impact their life. I want that to work for me. And I also want to be worthy of this person. There's a sense of like, I want, 
I want to be worthy. And so at that time, like those last two years transition into high school to college, I would say I thought my relationship with God was at an all-time high. And then I got to college and I had a very negative experience with a church. I felt a lot of church hurt and if you guys know anything about that, um, you can totally, I mean, I can talk about it more or something like that, but when you experience something like that, I think the reason it hurts so much is because you expect the church, um, a place where they say like, oh, this is God's love, like we are focused on God. You expect them it to be perfect, I think. At least that's what I did. I expected not to feel that, but then I did. And it took me, I mean, it's taken me two years to realize that it's a church, it's not God. There's people in the church and the church isn't perfect and people aren't perfect. and. I can't have these ex expectations that are always going to be met. Really the only thing that I can trust is what the Bible says. So um, anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, freshman year I had a, like I said, bad church hurt and I kind of stopped going to church. I didn't necessarily stop, but I think that was when the person I was dating and my relationship with Christ like wasn't at the focus anymore. Um, this person, my, boy my boyfriend at the time was going to the same church that had hurt me and I didn't feel like I could go there and so I was going to different things, trying different things and while I was in this time um, I lost my grandfather and there was also just a transitionary piece of like moving over to college and also COVID was happening things like that and honestly like I lost focus on God and then that is when I started focusing on worldly things. Um, mostly drinking at this time. I wasn't like going to parties or anything like that, but there was a few times that would happen. Um, maybe like not even once a month, but something would happen and my partner at the time didn't find it respectful and I knew it wasn't, but it was something that I thought like would bring me joy. And so I did it. Um, and this was towards the end of the school year. Like I think it happened once during the school year in March. It was, like I said, did not happen a lot, but it happened in March and then over the summer, um, like a couple times. And then sophomore year started and my partner and I, we wanted to get centered back at, like have God at the center of a relationship because I think I was starting to notice like the difference of how our relationship looked over um, our junior and senior year of high school versus our freshman year. And so we started doing Bible studies together and he asked me that I would start coming to the church that he went to and I did start going and I am so grateful that I did because now here I am. But during all of last year, I think there was still a lot of church hurt and church blame and I was just like putting up a guard and I didn't want to get too involved because I thought I was better than people, honestly. I think I struggled with pride. I think pride is a really big sin. I, obviously we're changing every day. I don't think I still struggle with that issue but at that time I thought I think I had a certain level of oh I think I'm better because they said that these things and I don't agree with them and like they're wrong I'm right. Um, which in reality we should all of us both parties should listen to what the Bible says. But anyways I just think that one bad experience like kind of dictated my first first year and then the first half of the year and again last year I didn't drink that often but it would happen here and there and it just wasn't respectful to my relationship at the time because I had a person telling me that they didn't respect it and then I also didn't really like it I would feel guilty immediately afterwards I also don't think that it helped that in the two years of the first two years of college was when my boyfriend and I started becoming intimate and it would go on and off where we would like try something and then we'd be like no we can't do this we'd go months without doing it and then it would happen again and then we kind of just fell into it um the last half of sophomore year and i was going to church i was starting to grow my relationship i was reading the bible every day it was getting stronger but then also i was doing things that are a sin in my religion and so i think that definitely impacted it it's just a constant back and forth and my boyfriend at the time just became like everything. I think I put God on the back burner. Like I said, I was doing these things, going to church, going to youth group, going to small group, reading the Bible every day. I was doing these things, but I was also, I was also like lying. I was hiding a part of my life and not repenting for it when I knew it was damaging, not just to me, but to my partner and to our relationship as a whole. Um, but you know, when you're doing something like that, you, maybe some people watching this know that it is 
it's enjoyable. I <laughs> think it's fun to do something. To some, it seems fun to like share something like that with someone who you love so much. Um, but obviously, <laughs> things happen. I think overall, my worth started to be found in that person and not God. And I think that's eventually what led up to our relationship ending this past September. So it's been a huge piece of my testimony because I think when that happened, and events following, I had to actually look at myself and look at my life and realize like, Aubrey, this is not where you want to be. This is not what you want to be doing. And it sucks because something so heartbreaking had to happen for me to realize that. But there's like a saying that like, God works the best like in those hard times. Like you have to hit rock bottom to meet God. And I did hit rock bottom. And so I'll talk about that a little bit. Past, I don't know, four months, I think, I would say is where my faith has grown the most. Um, maybe just the past three and a half months, I guess. So the second week after my breakup, I got into it again. I was drinking again and just like heavily, the most I had ever done. And um, there was also an event where I had a hookup. This is very fresh to me. I am trying to process what has happened because after this hookup, I had friends like encouraging me like, oh, this is so much fun. You're getting over a breakup, etc. And there's a lot to go out because um, I still have so much love for the person I was in a relationship with. And in that time, I was still in love with my boyfriend or my ex-boyfriend. And I thought I was having consensual sex with another person. And I'm very scared to share this because after like a lot of conversations and praying, I, and like, just like, conversations and time from the event that transpired i'm re realizing that you can consent to something and then take away that consent and that makes it non-consensual very scared to share this because i don't i'm still processing it if you guys can't tell um because i told people afterwards like i had sex with this guy I told people afterwards like hey like i slept with this person and look at me like i'm getting over this person and immediately as it happened during the time again like i said it was not consensual um, i took away consent not enthusiastic throughout it and there was things i'm not going to try to get too into detail because i know that it should say personal to me um and also like i'm not fully sure exactly like i said still processing through the emotions um, but I think it's important because that was like the that was the breaking point um, of like wow I'm in the moment doing something that I don't want to be doing and then afterward felt disgusting felt humiliated felt broken and the only person I could turn to was God um, at the time I did not realize what was happening or what had happened what had transpired with this person was not consensual I I was trying to like hype it up and um it took like talking to my mom and talking to my friends like just recently like this happened almost it almost happened three months ago and i was like still trying to convince myself like no you had fun and it actually took reading a, a short story called cat person and i'll link it down below if you guys want to read it there is a sex scene within it and the way that it was described when I was reading it, I was disgusted because it's clearly a non-consensual uh, encounter. And I was like, wow, this is actually like almost exactly how I was feeling. And some of the exact things that happen in the scene happen in, in my encounter, which sorry if you end up reading that an insight. But anyways, um, I was trying to convince myself that this was okay. This was okay. And then just like in the past two weeks, it's really started to be brought up like emotionally, like feeling broken, bringing up past trauma, my past sexual assault, and a lot of comparison because the first one was so clearly sexual assault that I didn't realize that the second one could be. Um, and I think also the fact that I've told people like, hey, like, look, I was getting over this person and having all these people maybe thinking this about me. Um, and then while I'm processing like, Aubrey like you were actually sexually assaulted and then afterwards you were stalked and harassed which is huge. I'm getting off on a tangent um I don't even know if I'll include that but I do think it's important because um throughout like first thinking it was a hookup I felt extremely broken sexual brokenness but 
when I thought it was consensual. And that's when I really dived in. I started going to church. I started having clear communication with people, asking questions. Um, I started praying every day. I had never prayed. I said I had prayed, but I was just asking for things um, in a non way of like being thankful for all of God's doings and like what he can do and how powerful he is. And so I, I bought a journal and I have been writing in it every single day. I've been opening my Bible every single day and building community. I think community is the biggest thing that's been able to get me through is because I have all these people who know God and I can see how God has worked in their life and have him work through my life. And that has been very helpful. A group and talking to my girlfriends and listening or going to church has been very helpful. Listening to podcasts, reading books and all this has been very helpful. And I actually got baptized, which I met, mentioned this um, in a blog in early November, which is so exciting because I was actually baptized in the Catholic church going back. And I was very resistant towards baptism because I didn't think I needed to do it again. But my first baptism, first it wasn't through immersion. And second, it wasn't my choice. It wasn't my decision. Whereas this past November, I recognized that the only person that I can put my faith in and trust in is God because God provides and he knows everything. He knows me truly. He knows everything that has happened and is going to happen when I'm going through currently. And that is just like so astonishing to me and so it gives me so much hope, um, especially through this time when I need hope. And so I got baptized because I want to live for Jesus. And that's why I'm doing this video is because I want to share my story. I don't know exactly what it'll look like. God is literally the only thing, and I know that sounds cliche, but he has been the only constant in my life where if I have like a feeling of loneliness i can open up my bible or listen to a podcast um and just recognize that god is there and i'm not lonely he's with me all the time and he w has been with me he has been with me and through this like lowness and like i'm at a low right now because like i've said again i'm recognizing that wow uh, this has happened and i'm processing like these new like revelations of what happened um or what i went through in September. I don't know if I'm making sense. I feel like I kind of got off on a tangent, but basically I currently am at like the strongest point of my relationship with God. And it took going through, um, like in the past three months, going through a four and a half year relationship ending and then going through a sexual assault. And I know like in the time up until a month after, I don't think I realized it was sexual assault. And like I said, I just over the past week I've been calling it for what it is which has been hard because you don't you don't know but God has been with me and he still is with me especially during Advent season and so I'm still learning to trust on him lean on him when I have worries about the future or what's gonna happen I know I just have to talk to him pray to him um, yeah I feel like a lot of good things are coming in just lots of blessings like my living situation next year and just the people that are in my life right now are very helpful and i will say like some of the things that i've said i've never said to anyone or they may be new to people watching this so text me <laughs> if you want um but yeah there's just a lot going on right now and maybe that's why i think it's best to share this right now Basically, what i wrote here is that um the only person i can know that I can depend on and trust on and truly knows and completely gets me is God and he is the only one that matters. Like I said before I'm still trying to figure out right now like what's going on in my personal life but I do know that God is at the front and I'm chasing him so wholeheartedly and I want I want everything that he has to give me and I know even though that life right now is sucking especially like I said with all the new things I'm figuring out um but like God's there and I think he's working in me and hopefully people can recognize that um, because I want to give all those good things. I want to be kind and patient and loving and just spread like all his joy. And I hope, I really hope I'm doing that. Um, I have a hope that I'm self-aware and all these things. And yeah, I think that's why I just wanted to share my testimony is even though like I would say right now in the past few weeks of like realization and like constant prayer to God, and feelings of like even more brokenness um and desperation i'm realizing that with god like i have everything i need and i'm not gonna say it's easy because it's very very hard 
and it will test you. It will test you 100%. Um, but I just feel like I feel strong and I think that's because of God. And I'm excited to see what he does in my life and continues doing like a gut baptized, which is super exciting. And I have all these wonderful, amazing people in my life. And even though I might be going through something so weird and I'm still processing it and don't know exactly how to move on from here, I know that God isn't gonna change. I know that I'm going to continue following him and chasing after him. And I hope that is reflected in who I am, how I talk to people, how I come across on here, hopefully. So that is a long rambled testimony. I know I talked a lot about focusing on that, but that is kind of like what I'm going through right now. And I think that's important to share um, because it's just proof that even through like literally the depths of the storm that God is there and I am saying he's working in me. And hopefully that gives you guys some motivation and some insight of how God can work in your life because I would say he's working in mine and it's hard like I said it is so hard and it is going to continue changing and things are going to keep on coming that I'm not ready for and that's okay because I know that I have the strength of God just direct on my bag sorry that was a little crunchy but I'm gonna leave this here I'm sure as soon as I turn off the camera and or like when I'm editing this there will be things I want to add but like I said testimonies change um, but right now, that's 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 my relationship with Christ. That's where I'm at right now. Um, this is my declaration of like God is at the forefront, and I'm not doing it for anyone else. I'm doing it for me, for healing in me, and to hopefully help people in the future or people who watch this video, I guess. But let me know if you guys want to see like more Christian-related talking. I would definitely do that. Um, this feels like a weight off my chest. I don't know if some of you that watch my videos, which is weird, because I'm revealing a lot in this. Um, but maybe that's good. You can better understand me. If you want to chat, please let me know. Comment. I will respond. But yeah, anyways, I am nervous. So, talk to you guys very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace and love. Bye, guys.